You're listening to Keeping Up With The Knights, a podcast for the faculty and staff at Steele High School, allowing them to connect outside of the classroom. Teacher, coach, mentor, and speaker, Michael Herrera, a past district teacher of the year, will sit down with fellow teachers and bring their stories to life. Sit back, relax, and enjoy these stories as they unfold on this episode of Keeping Up With The Knights. Welcome back to another episode of Keeping Up With The Knights. I am sitting down with Catherine Adams, a brand new teacher here at Steele High School. I am so happy to have you. Thanks for taking time out of your day to visit with me. Absolutely. And you can totally just call me Katie. I know everybody calls me Catherine, but that's basically just my grandma. So <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yeah, no, I'm not going there. I yeah, got no, you. not my thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, welcome to Steel High School. I've been doing uh, this podcast now and kind of interviewing a lot of people that I already am familiar with. Um, but the whole point of it is for others to get to know everybody on campus. So for newbies and people that have been here for a while, getting to know each other. So um, my next few episodes are all going to be about the people that are new on campus. So welcome to Steel High School. We're glad you're here. But let's start off. I always like to start off my podcast by asking five get to know you type questions that I call bell ringers. So I'll do the same for you. You'll do the same for me. And then we'll kind of get into the interview. Sounds good. All right. First question I have for you. If you can go back in time and high five yourself for something that you did, what would you go back and high five yourself for? Man, I, that's a really tough one. And I know you asked this to other people too. And I was like, yep. I don't even know what I would say. It's probably um, one of my favorite questions. <laughs> Cause it's so hard. Um, I would say probably um, just sticking with it at the end um, in college, it just got really tough for me at the end, I just had a lot happen at the end of college. And I just, I wanted to give up, but I was like, you know what? I need to just keep doing it because I'm doing this for a reason. And I finished and I got my first job and everything's fantastic, so. <laughs> Very good. All right, a little triumph story there. Uh, question number two, if you were not a teacher, what would you be doing? Um, well, I am a theater teacher. So if I was not an actual theater teacher, I would probably have the big dream of being an actual actress. Okay, so like actress as a movie star or like Broadway? Like Broadway, definitely okay. uh, not not movies. That's okay. not really my thing, but okay. definitely Broadway. I got you. Well, I got a follow up question to come up in here in just a second. Um, if you could go to any place in the world, what is that one place outside of the U.S. that you would want to go to? Oh, I want to go so many places. I love to travel, and I've actually I went to Scotland in college, and it was just the greatest experience of my life. So I would love to go back there, right. but I would also like to visit some of the other stuff around there, like Italy and Spain and France and just all of those like older European countries that have so much history. Yeah. America just doesn't have. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I love Europe. My wife and I do a lot of traveling as well prior to having kids. But now that we have kids, it's like, all right, when are we going to have that first true vacation? Because our vacations now are like, let's go to Corpus, I guess, you know, yeah. uh, having a four year old and a two year old, you can't really go spend a lot of time on a, on a, on a flight. So, all right. Question uh, number four for you is what is one thing that you learned about yourself during all of this COVID? And, it's, and I'm, I'm really specifically talking about kind of like that March time frame to about like August time frame, right? Right. So I learned that I need structure. Like I like having that. I know what's going to happen at what time. And I just, I just need that. And if I don't, I just get lazy and I don't take care of myself and I just, everything just kind of goes on the wayside. And so that structure really keeps me moving. So are you like a type A personality? Kind of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was about to say like, I, you're speaking my language right now, because for me, I was the same way. I definitely need that structure behind my daily routine of, alarm, wake up, go to work, do what I need to do, come home, you know, take care of the kids, whatever, eat dinner, shower, go to bed and repeat. Um, anyway, all right. So question number five I have for you is kind of along the lines of, of what you teach here. Favorite movie of all time. Now, it can be movie or Broadway. Oh, no, those are two totally different things. I know. So you can go either route. It doesn't matter. Go either route. So um, because my world is very like music oriented. I'll just, I'll just leave that for later. Cause I'll probably end up talking about it again anyway. But, um, so my favorite movie, um, Ooh, I have so many. There's, I think that the one that I always come back to 
just when I need that little pick me up is Legally Blonde. All right. And it's on Broadway now too. So yeah. it's like, I kind of get the best of both worlds. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just that like empowerment to like, just you can do it kind of thing. And it's, it's, it's a fantastic story. I gotcha. And it's a comedy too, but it's got that storyline too, you know, Definitely. right? You can overcome it. Well, those are my five. Go ahead, shoot five away to me. Okay. So my, my first question, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would you be? Um, dang it. Cause it's like what age, right? Like right now versus when I'm 50 or 60 might have That's a different true. answer. <laughs> um, so I'll answer it as a retirement type of question. Okay. <laughs> I would want to live probably close to a beach. Um, I just love sunrise and sunset probably more so sunset because I'm not a person that will just wake up early for the heck of it. Um, I better be going out for like a 15 mile run or something like that training for marathons or something for me to wake up early. I, I love my sleep too much. So I would love if I were a millionaire, love to have some like beach house with a bunch of windows waking up to the sunrise or sun, uh, sunrise and going to sleep watching the sunset. Oh, that sounds beautiful. So nowhere, nowhere specific, but just somewhere on a wonderful Over the beach. the beautiful sunset beach. Yes, in water. Oh, that sounds beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so my next question, I love to read. So who is your favorite author? All right, so I don't actually have a favorite author. I read a, I read a lot. I love reading books, and I'm always reading probably like two or three books at the same time. Um, but it's, there's no particular author. It's more about maybe the genre. I love okay. um, motivational books. I love autobiographies. I love like the self-help, like the growth mindset kind of stuff that just, um, whether it's a book that was written for business type people, I can always use it for teaching and coaching. Um, so Absolutely. any book that has that kind of flavor to it, I'm all about it. That's awesome. Okay, this one's a little bit of a fun question. Um, if there's always those menial tasks that you do all the time, and as a, as a parent, you know, I'm a, I'm a mom of two and laundry, cooking, that stuff. So if there was one task, that you could hire someone to do for you for the rest of your know life, the answer. what would it be? I already know the answer. Dishes. <laughs> dishes? <laughs> dishes. That's my job. Like, my job is to do the dishes, but if I can erase that. And a matter of fact, I even had this conversation with my two-year-old daughter. Uh, it was probably this weekend um, because I was doing dishes. I, You know, being a basketball coach, now I'm pretty much only home with the family on Sundays. You know, we've got basketball Monday through Saturday at various times. And I don't get to spend a lot of time. So on Sunday morning, like it's finally catching up all the dishes that have been piling up. And it's like, it just takes forever for me to do those dishes. And so she wants me to hold her. She's like, daddy, can you hold me? I'm like, no, I'm doing dishes. But I said, pretty soon here, you're going to be doing the dishes. And she's like, okay, I'll do the dishes, daddy. You know, so she's a two-year-old. So I'm already priming her to take over. Oh, I do the same thing. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's so bad. Like I hate cooking. Okay. I, I hate it so much. And I'm like, my kid, he's six. And I keep, I keep telling them someday you're going to get to do this and I won't have to do this anymore. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> like, I hope that he'll get the idea that he'll get to do it. Totally agree. Okay. My next question. Um, do you have anything that you collect? Hmm. Ooh, I I'm, like, I'm like processing in my head to say <laughs> that right. Okay. I do. Um, I may collect more, but it's not coming to me right now. But the one thing that I do collect is I love playing golf. And so I love going to golf courses that I've never played before. And mo at most golf courses, they have what you call a logo ball, right? Like the, the logo of the golf course. And so I've got a couple of displays with probably over a hundred golf balls from places that I've been to all over the country and all over the world. Wow. Yep. That's a lot. Yep. So yes, <laughs> I collect logo golf balls. That's an interesting collection. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So my last question I'm going to preface this one just a tiny bit. Right. Um, as a theater teacher, I always have random items. I mean, like the most random items you could imagine in my classroom. But then when I moved here to steal, I had to clean out from the previous teacher. Right. And I was just like, what is all this stuff? <laughs> so my question to you is, I know you're not a theater teacher, but you are still a teacher. So what is the most interesting or unusual thing you have in or on your desk right now? Um, here you go. Let me right here. <laughs> there you go. There's 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 my skeleton head with his headband. I think we got the headbands for a Mr. Vontez a couple of years ago, uh, 
when we came back to school for the first time, but I teach health science. So I teach, you know, obviously the medical classes and uh, there you go. I got a skeleton and a brain and a heart on my desk. There you go. <laughs> Only in that kind of classroom, right? That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Cause it would be kind of weird desk. if I did it. Right. If, if it's anywhere else, it wouldn't make any sense. None. Like, but in no. that classroom, it makes sense. It might be a little eerie because it could be I was a murderer or something like that. And I've got someone's skull on my desk. But no, it makes sense in my class. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's my five questions. Awesome. Well, good. Thank you for participating in Bell Ringers. So let's, you know, that just kind of gives everybody an opportunity to, to warm up to each other and give the audience an opportunity to learn a little bit about us that they wouldn't normally uh, have the opportunity to because we all kind of go into our classrooms, we close the door, we teach all day, and then we go home. But there's really not a lot of time for us to get to know each other and make those connections outside of the classroom. So thanks for participating in that. Um, I like to keep things pretty simple. You've, you've probably listened to a couple of the episodes, like you mentioned. Um, you know, I don't know who you are. Therefore, a lot of people on campus probably don't know who you are. And especially when we got half of our face being covered up, we're seeing your face for the first time. Um, Let's just start by talking about your childhood. Let's talk about where you grew up, what your childhood was like, and let's kind of keep it maybe in that uh, elementary to middle school, high school time frame. Okay. Um, so I grew up pretty traditional family. Um, my mom and dad, um, they've been together 30 some odd years now, and they're, awesome. they're just such a, a beacon of hope for me and my marriage, and I love that. But um, they... Um, where was I going? Okay, so I'm the oldest of four, okay. and um, my mom was a teacher before she had kids, and so my whole life I was just raised that way. Um, so oldest of four, I um, grew up in the Dallas area actually. Okay. So um, I went to school, great big schools, um, just like Steel. What uh, what what area specifically? Um, I went to Rowlett. Okay, which is yeah. kind of the northeastern side of Dallas. <laughs> so people that have been to Dallas know where that is, but yep. most people don't. <laughs> no, I know because I, mean, I know their basketball team, so I know that's why I know where they're at. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, I. Uh, so my uh, mom was a band teacher actually, and so right. I was really interested in that kind of like fine art area, and so I played flute in junior high and high school, and marched in the band and did all that. And then, of course, um, being in the fine arts, I got introduced to a dance. I got introduced to um, theater. Eventually, I was just really big into the fine arts. I was never into actual art, though. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I was like, I cannot draw or paint to save my life. <laughs> but you give me, like, an instrument or yep. dance shoes, and I can do it. <laughs> All right. So were you on the dance team as well there? I was not, actually. Okay. I I going to such a big school, a lot like steel, you kind of just have to pick something. Yeah, right, right. And so since I had done, um, in middle school, I went to like a fine art academy and I did band and dance. Well, I had to pick one when I got to high school and I was like, well, yeah. I'm gonna stick with band because my mom has invested a bunch of money in this. Right. <laughs> so I did band thinking that I would want to do that for a really long time. And so then eventually in high school, I was like, actually, I really kind of like theater a little bit more than I like band. And so I kind of transitioned myself slowly into that world. Okay. So you, uh, in high school, when you were in theater, did you, uh, did you have a lead role? Were you, uh, what, what all kind of do you participate in? So in high school, when I did theater, my high school was huge, like still, you know, they're a 6A school now. Right? They're huge. Yep. So um, I was kind of that little a little tiny girl in the back that, you know, she was there, she filled in the background, but then I was also like the costume manager, okay. which they didn't really have anybody that first year I started. And I was like, well, I'll do it. Cause I like, I knew how to sew. Cause my mom taught me and right. I was like, I'll, just, I'll try it. And I loved it. Like, I was like, this is awesome. Like the costuming, like you get to build a character, how they look. And it's just so fascinating because basically you're a fashion designer for an imaginary person. Yep. And it's, so much fun. <laughs> Endless opportunities, right? It's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So you grew up in the Northeast Dallas. Now you said that your your mom was an educator, right? Mm -hmm. um, so grew up in a family of educators and fine arts, and that's kind of where you landed. So you're kind of following in those footsteps. Pretty much, which uh, my dad is actually like super opposite of that. Like my dad is a statistician, actually. He just does math. I mean, okay. he's got two master's degrees like in physics and something else I, I think statistics okay i mean just genius off the charts and so when i told him i wanted to do theater he was like 
Uh -huh. wouldn't do what? <laughs> 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 like I was good at math, but I didn't like it like, like he does. And so yeah. I was like, no, I, I no. <laughs> Not Very interesting. All right. So what does he do research? Does he have some kind of, uh, you know, well, he actually works um, for Texas Instruments, you know, the company that okay. makes like the chips yeah. and stuff. So he does a lot of their data processing and predictions and things like that. And I don't understand all of it. And I don't even pretend just to understand it all. But he Show does. Mind graph. But he does. He teaches a lot, too, which is kind of odd because he was like, why do you want to be a teacher? But now he teaches people like he goes even across the ocean to other countries and he teaches people in those countries how to do what he does. OK, so right. it's kind yeah, of in a weird like roundabout way, an educator, and he doesn't want to admit it. <laughs> I like it, though, because it sounds like your parents having been married for 30 years now, you've got, you know, the more fine art person and you've got like the You've got the type A and the type B. You've got the free spirit and you's got the one who's a little bit more structured. So <laughs> they're very opposite. <laughs> that's probably what makes it work for them so much. All right. So. All right. You graduated from Rowlett, yes. right? Um, yes. And then where did you go to college? And okay, so I went go ahead. to college in a little bitty town. I went to Howard Payne University, which okay. is a little bitty Baptist school in Brownwood, Texas. Um, and being at Rowlett, I was such a, I was a small person. I was just, I felt like a little bitty number in a great big world. Right. And I just wanted to be, I wanted to be somebody. I wanted to feel like I mattered. And so I went to a smaller school, hoping to be that, you know, bigger fish in a small pond. And it was exactly what I needed. I went to Howard Payne. It was a nice little Baptist school, just tiny little school. And our theater program there was so little that I actually got to have so much more experience yeah. than I would have at a bigger university. I was able to try out all the different things and learn all the little different aspects because I had more opportunity because there were fewer people there. Right. Yeah. And so it was a fantastic opportunity there. And you majored in? I majored in theater okay. education. So theater education with a minor in English. Because okay. <laughs> right. I mean, theater and English tend to go hand in hand. Yeah. Uh, so I went ahead and did the English thing because I, I took like Shakespeare and poetry and stuff like that. So just happened that I got that minor. <laughs> I gotcha. And so maybe share like one of your memorable experiences or something that had kind of an impact on you during your college years. Oh, what was probably something that impacted me the most, I would say, um, because I was in show after show after show after show after show. But my very first show for this for college, I got the lead role. And I was like, bro, I'm a freshman and I've never had a lead role in my life. And you're putting me in a lead role. They're like, we, you're great. You're like, you're perfect for it. Like, you're just the person we need. And so they put me in this role. And that was such a growing experience. But the one thing that stood out the most about that show in particular was the girl, the, the senior girl, like she had, she played my mother in the play. And so um, we, the two of us kind of had this little scene where I was, sleeping like I was laying in a bed sleeping and she was just kind of talking out loud to herself and then the phone rings and then she goes to answer the phone and then she has to leave because of what someone tells her in this phone call but the phone never rang <laughs> and she's just like standing around waiting for the phone to ring <laughs> and I'm sleeping and I'm just like oh my gosh what do we do right right Improv. So, it's like it's those moments that remind you, this is live theater. Like, right. this is not something that you're like, okay, cut, let's run that again, let's go back. Right. There's so much more like adrenaline rush to it. And so I learned so much. I learned that you really need to be ready for anything to happen because right. she ended up just like making something up and leaving. <laughs> like, bless you, because I could not have done that as a freshman. I was not prepared for that. So it was, it's just so live and so raw and so real. And that's what I really love about it. So I was thinking that you were going to take it down a different road where you would have said like, I made this noise to make it sound like a telephone ring for her. <laughs> I was so stumped. I was like, I don't know what to do. And so she just like made up some made up lines that make sense. And like, it yeah. worked. And she was yeah. so like, she was so furious afterward. I was like, I don't know if she handled that well, but in the end, I, I learned so much from that experience. You know, I like, I like that you're sharing that because it, the image that I have is, is you as a freshman learning from a senior Yeah. connection. It's take yourself out of the picture for a second. It's a student learning from a student. And that's so important for us in education that it doesn't need to be a one way street from teacher to student. Let the students teach each other because it's an excellent way. They can say it in their own words. 
Um, they know how to express it and, it and it has a lot more value. But the other thing that I liked what you said is that um, you were given the lead role, caught you by surprise. But in that moment, <laughs> you probably felt really valued and validated in, in your realm and in your world and that you can carry that on. So it sounds oh, like you have, you have two powerful moments in your life that I'm sure now you can portray into your own classroom with your own students now. So no, it's a good story for sure. Um, <laughs> all right, so graduated from college, you got your, your master's degree. No. Okay, so we stopped at our bachelor's degree. I <laughs> got my bachelor's, okay. yeah. Um, I actually had my first child right out of college. Okay. Um, and so I took that year to just kind of establish my marriage and my child, my family life. And then I decided, okay, it's time for me to go to work. <laughs> like I got yeah. this degree, I paid all this money. I'm, I'm going to use it. Like, I'm not going to stay home. I'm the kind of person that I love my family, but I still need to feel like I'm participating. Right. Right. And so I, I love working. <laughs> Sad to say that I love, cause I love my job. So well, let's, I love let's go there. Cause that's actually kind of my next question is after you graduated, what was the progression of working from then until now? So I actually got hired. So I went to obviously Brownwood, which is a little bitty town. And then about 45 minutes south of Brownwood is this little bitty town called Brady, Brady, Texas. A lot of people drive through there when they're on the way to like Abilene or San Angelo or something. And a lot of people just drive through, don't even think about it. Um, but that's where I live. That's where I met my husband. And so that's where I, we lived. And um, when I decided it was time for me to teach, I had like two options. <laughs> I had Brady High School, or I had this little bitty town right next to Brady, which Brady was small, and I couldn't even imagine anything smaller than that. It was called Rochelle. And the population for Rochelle, like on the on the like sign is like 52. <laughs> like, I'm not kidding you, it's tiny. And so that was the only other school really like in that area. Right. And that was the school my husband had gone to. And, and I was like, man, I, what? <laughs> Like I graduated with 2000 right. people and you're telling me there's a whole entire school here right. that's K through 12, 150 people. Like what? So I, um, I had applied at both and I, you know, I got this call back from Rochelle and they were like, we would love to have you. Like you're a, a fantastic, like you sound like you really want to teach theater. Problem is we can't afford a theater teacher. <laughs> and I was like, Okay. Um, I had my English minor, obviously, and I had gotten my certification for English as well as theater. So I had both of those and they were like, you just don't have enough experience in English for us to hire you. And I was like, great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that, you know, that brand new teacher coming out of college, I was like, man, I felt so defeated. Yeah. And so then they called me back like a couple of days later and they were like, hey, we remember you saying that you were actually pretty good with technology. Like I had said it like offhandedly, I hadn't really thought much of it, but I mean, I, I was, I was pretty good with using a computer and putting things together. And so they were like, would you be interested in doing computers? You would get to teach computers, but you would also get to teach theater. And right. because they wanted to have that theater teacher right. so bad <laughs> that they were like, we're just gonna take this computer job and add theater to it. And I was like, yes, <laughs> yes, let's do it. <laughs> so I went and got my theater, my computer certification. And so I was actually a computer science teacher. That's what it said on my paycheck. I was the computer science teacher for yeah. five years. Ma made your dad proud probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, you made your dad proud probably. Right, like he was like, finally something that's like real. I'm like, yeah. dad, you don't even know. But um, I, I actually really enjoyed it, surprisingly. I thought that it was just like something to kind of get my foot in the door and then eventually I would just move on to something else. But I, I really loved it. Like I ended up getting like certified, like Microsoft Word and Excel certified, like go. through Microsoft. Like I really loved it. <laughs> and so I got really into like, I did podcasting and videos and things like that, that I just never really imagined that I would do, but it really tied in so well to what I already knew yep. with the audio and filming and just Absolutely. podcasting and all of that. It all just really tied in really nicely. And so I, I just loved it. But then I also it's got to teach meant to be man, all the stars aligned to put you in that role. I know it was perfect. So, but I got to also do theater, which they had never had there. I mean, it's this little bitty school kindergarten through 12th grade, 150 kids. Like they'd never had anybody do theater before. And so I took on their one act play kids. And the first two years were, were rough. 
Yeah. They were, it was tough. It was they really, are for everybody. Don't worry about that. It was hard. Those first two years, I didn't have a mentor. I had nobody. I was just by myself. I was trying to figure it out. Those first two years of contests, the kids were getting to know me. I was getting to know them and they were tough. But by that third year, yep. we managed to advance to by district, which hadn't been done in over 20 years for that school. So that was like a super accomplishment, not only for them, but for me as a teacher to have that validation of, yes, you can do this. Right. <laughs> it's just getting there. That was the journey, getting to that point that I was ready for. So then after we advanced that year and then we did advance for the next three years, actually, That's awesome. which that this last year that we had, we obviously got shut down because of the quarantine. And so we got the advancing trophy the day before the lockdown. Oh, wow. Yeah, they locked us down right after that. I was like, no, so we didn't actually get to go to the next level and see what happened after that. But it was, I, I will forever cherish the time that I had while I was at that other school because I learned so much about myself and about my teaching, like how I want to teach these kids. I learned so much about it. Well, you said something that I have to go back to and visit. We don't have to spend a lot of time there, but you said podcasting. So did you have a podcast? <laughs> I didn't actually, I really wanted to. Um, it was actually the, the fifth, the, like my final year there, I had a kid and he really wasn't into the video thing because we did like the video announcements and he really was like, he really just wasn't into it. He didn't want to be on screen. He really just didn't care for the editing stuff. And I was like, well, what do you think about podcasting? And he was like, sure. I was like, okay, here we go. And he was like, what do I do? I'm like, well, what are you, what are you interested in? And he said, well, I really like, like video games and things like that. I was like, well, do a video game podcast. And that's what he did. And it was fantastic. <laughs> like he only had a couple of episodes because we ended up the school year ended and it was just, it got really crazy, but it was really fun to adventure into something that I'd never done before. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And I like, um, obviously I have two podcasts. I don't know if you know that. I do this one, Keeping Up With The Knights, and I also have a basketball podcast called Coach Mike on the Mic, Let's Talk Hoops. And the process back in probably maybe April, May timeframe, um, obviously we're deep into COVID, we're, we're all at home, and, and I started listening to podcasts because I would, I would drive, I was the only one in the family that would leave the house to do the errands, to grocery shop and all that kind of stuff, and so... Um, I live out in New Braunfels. It takes me about, you know, 20 minutes to get to the closest store. So I had a lot of time on my hands and I started listening to podcasts. The light bulb went off and I was like, you know what? I've always wanted to do a podcast. I've always wanted to be on video. I've always wanted to interview people. I have aspirations of writing a book one day. And the title of it is going to be What's Your Story? And so this podcast, the original name to this podcast was called What's Your Story? Uh, it transitioned into keeping up with the nights. It just kind of has a nicer ring to it. But the process of teaching myself how to effectively get to my first episode, there's so much value. And so on this podcast, I like to give teachers ideas, tools to use, strategies, because when you walk into someone else's classroom and you see it the way it's decorated, let alone how they put their objectives on the boards or their, organi their organizing methods, you're like, oh, I like that. I like that. I like that. Well, through a podcast now, hopefully through interviewing other teachers, people can pick up on things they can use in the classroom. So if anybody's out there listening right now, I think podcasts is an excellent project for probably any class. Now, I don't mean go physically do a podcast, but the implementation, the leadership, the communication that it would take for two people or five people to come up with a concept, to come up with a logo, to come up to your script, your questions, you know, there's English there, right? History teachers could simply do your project is to come up with a name for a, a era, you know, a period of time that's going to be your, I mean, I think any class of any subject could throw out a six weeks or a nine week project because there's so much involved with their content, right? Because you'd have to do Q and A's. You can come up with, you know, who would you interview back in the 1700s? Like what questions would you ask them? There's so much involved in there. Um, 
that I like. I like the idea that you gave this kid. You gave him the platform to at least investigate and research and, and get into something that even you wouldn't have uh, done yourself and you learn from him. But um, no, that's, that's, that's definitely, I like that. And the second thing you mentioned is um, you had your, what would your three, pardon me on my memory is drawing a blank right now. You just mentioned something about three. What'd you say? We had three years of back-to-back by district. No, no, it was the year three. That's what it was. Okay, thank you. See, just, I love wrong answers because wrong answers lead to right answers. What what I was going to say is that um, the same advice was given to me when I first started teaching in my first year. His name is Francisco Perez, and a lot of people that were here at Steel High School, he used to be a Spanish teacher here, now works at Central Office. And after introducing myself to him, he was like, Mike, just listen, man, year one, just survive, like, just get through it. Like, don't, don't get caught up into anything. You're not going to be an excellent teacher. He's going through, and I'm like, thinking as a type A perfectionist, like, no, I've got to get it right the first year. He goes second year, just build on what you did the first year and screw up a little bit more. But he goes by year three, your money. And sure enough, it was year three rolled around. And I felt like, I got this. I can, I can do this. I'm, I'm in the right profession. So I like that you said that because I totally agree with that. It's true. It really, it took that third year. And I told my sister, my sister is a teacher now too. And I was like that first year, just survive, just yep. get through it. Cause I mean, you will eventually, right. you might be kicking and screaming and crying by the end of it, but you're going to make it. That's but right. then the next year you're a little bit smarter, a little bit wiser. You're a little bit stronger. Yeah. But then by that third year, you got it. Because yep. by the time I got to my third year, I was basically a veteran teacher at my school. Like we had such a <laughs> turnaround constantly. I was like, I'm like the oldest person here, practically. I'm so young. Like it doesn't make any sense. But by that third year, you've really, you really got something going. It's, ma- it's magical. Year three is where it's at. All right. So you've been officially teaching for how many years now? Five. So this is my sixth. Okay, so this is your sixth year. Very good. All right. Well, let me ask you this question. This is kind of a little bit more in-depth kind of question. You can take it wherever you want to go, but I just want to know why you teach. Why do I teach? Mm -hmm. I teach because they need it. And I don't mean that they need education. I mean, of course they do, because if if you don't, if you're not educated, you just, you just fall on the wayside, but you have to have, I feel as a theater teacher, students need that. And that's a super like deep statement. I'm gonna try not to get like too like into it, but. No, it's okay, um, take take it wherever you wanna go. So theater is an outlet for a lot of kids. And I know for me it was too, because in theater you get to express things that you wouldn't have been able to anywhere else. And you get to explore things that you wouldn't have anywhere else. Because if you're playing a character on stage, you get to be another person. You get to experience life as that person. How would that person be reacting to something? How would that person go about fixing this problem? How would I do it compared to that person? You're getting to experience life in someone else's shoes. And I think that as people, we need that. We need to be able to experience things that other people are experiencing because you can't always experience everything. Like, I don't know what it's like to live somebody else's life, but I can, learn about it and research it and find out more every time I play a new role. And theater also is super, um, so it's not just about experiencing other people's life, but it's also about expressing what you feel inside. A lot of people tend to bottle up what they have and hold on to it and keep it. And I did that a lot in high school. I would take my feelings and I would just bottle them up and throw them in a trash can somewhere until I just exploded. That trash can was just too full and I couldn't handle it anymore. But in theater, there's ways for you to say the things that you couldn't have said. You can get up on stage as a character and say those things that you want to say so badly. And it helps you get those emotions and get those feelings out. And a lot of these kids, that's what they need. They need a way to get those, get those feelings out. Absolutely. And it, Theater, I mean, there's just, I could just talk about theater for hours, but theater is also, it's a little bit of everything. And I feel like kids don't see how school can relate to them. And so I try to do that with my theater because um, my my kids, they don't just learn how to act. People are like, I don't wanna be in theater because I don't wanna have to get off on stage. Well, sure, we talk about fear of getting out on stage, fear of talking in front of people, 
when you get a job, you're going to have to probably present stuff to somebody at some point. Yep. Um, but it's not just about speaking on stage. It's about there's math. When you're building sets, you have to you have to know the math on how to do that. You have to know the math on how to budget. Can I afford to do this show? <laughs> do we have enough money for that? Um, there's science. How is sound projected out of the body? Like I teach a whole lesson on how the body make sound and they're just like mind blown right yeah <laughs> like they're like it's science i'm like well it's theater though like you have to know these things for yeah. theater to, to work and so and there's english you have to read the scripts and you have to dig deep into what those people are saying and there's history because you have to know the history of what's happening in that time period and you have to know um like, like how, how the history affects the costuming like in that time period, what did they wear? How did that affect the way they do things, you know? So theater is so cross-curricular. It's it's everything, but it's also just theater. It's yeah. just kids getting up there and having fun and letting it all go. And it's not just getting on stage. It's those techies behind the stage doing the work, turning on the lights, creating the sound and the costumes and everything else. And it's creating your own little world that just uses everything that you know and packages it up one nice little package and puts it on stage for everybody else to watch. Yeah, the image <laughs> that I get in mind right now is like the yin and the yang. You've got the simplicity, but yet the complexity of what it can be. And depending on your personality, whether you're very complex and outgoing or just real simplified, you can either be on stage or you can be off stage, you know? So I definitely see that. And I, and I love movies. I'm, I'm a, I wouldn't say that I'm a movie buff, um, but I just, I love watching movies because like you said, you get to put yourself in someone else's shoes. I love um, documentaries. I love autobiography books. I love movies about true stories because um, it gives me an opportunity, what, whatever kind of genre it is, to put myself in someone else's shoes and, and hear and see what they went through, um, their triumphs, their tribulations. Um, so, no, definitely. And when I was in college, I had a, a, a very appreciate. Um, mindset for theater and I went to almost probably every one of their productions I went to a very small university I went to the University of Tulsa about 4200 students and I, I just loved going to the plays uh, it was just one of those things where I didn't really do it in high school but when I went to college small university you looked for things to do and I, I don't remember what the first one was but once I went I was hooked I just I just have an appreciation towards theater so um, that's awesome, that's awesome. Well, tell me this, in your educational career as a student, um, is there a teacher that you will always remember and what about them made them so special? Okay, so I, I really can't even explain why this teacher meant so much to me. Um, most people would be like, oh, it's probably your theater director. Not at all, <laughs> not at all. Um, I had my, in high school, this teacher, she was just really, she cared about each and every one of us as individuals. She was my speech teacher. Like I didn't even need speech. I was in theater, but I was like, fine, I'll take this because I have to take this credit and I'll just do it. And she just, she took the time to get to know each and every one of us as individuals. And that really stuck with me. And I've had so many teachers that have impacted my life, but that one teacher, I was like, that, that is what it means to be a teacher. Getting into the head of those kids and figuring out how I can make this connect to them? How can this kid relate to this situation that I'm trying to teach them? And when, as seniors at my high school, you get to pick one teacher to take with you to the honor banquet. And I chose her and everyone was like, why did you pick her? Like, she's just the speech teacher. I was like, because she meant something to me. Yep. Like she, she taught me that. And as an educator, I'll forever remember that. And I later actually heard a couple years after I graduated from college that she died of cancer. Like, I was like, what? I had no idea that she was even sick. And she just, she spent so much time getting to know us individually that I'll always remember her. You know, that's, that's, a, that's a great story and for more reasons than one. But the, the, the part that sticks out to me right now is you said that people would say, but she's just a speech teacher. And I would take out just she's a teacher yeah 
<laughs> and it doesn't matter. You can fill in the blank because it can be speech. It can be theater. It can be, it can be basketball. It can be history, English, health science, forensic science. It can be, you know, finance. It can be marketing business. It doesn't matter what you just said there. It's that she made an impact on your life simply because she wanted to get to know her students. And that's what I promote on this podcast is it's about connections and relationships with kids in my opinion, that makes education a success in your classroom. Some base it based off of how students perform in terms of a numerical value. I tend to disagree um, because my success in my classroom, I can have a student in here that may even fail my class, um, that I feel that I was successful with that kid because um, they came to class every day. And, and maybe they skipped everyone else's class, but they came to mine. I'm impacting that kid. And that's what it's about. It's about that personal growth that we allow these young kids to have. And if we're just chasing numbers, you know, we're going to miss the mark, you know? So I like the fact that, um, yeah, you know what, I'm going to recognize this teacher because she had an impact on my life and it's for this reason, X, Y, and Z. Um, but absolutely. That's fantastic. All right. Um, what, uh, is maybe a pivotal moment in your educational career so far? Um, in your six years or five, five and a half, almost now years of education without mentioning any names. Um, some of that's had like a big impact on you, like just a, a pivotal moment, a good story um, where you realize that there's more to education than maybe our content. Oh gosh. It's, I, it all like comes back to the, it just all like, melts together with these kids that I taught at this other school because I had them for so long. I had, cause with such a small school, they always, you move up with them every year. Like you don't get to have a new class every year. And so I had some kids that they just, they're going to stick with me forever. Like I have the boy that did the podcast. He was the first year I met him. He was a little seventh grade boy and everybody hated him. I was like, why do y'all hate this kid so much? Like, he's just a normal guy like everybody else. But he was a little nerdier and he was a little bit different. And I was like, what is wrong with that? Like, what, why are y'all being like this to him? And so as the years went by, he would, he'd always pick my class every time he could. Like he, he chose to be in my theater class and he chose to be in my media classes and stuff. And so um, he, cause he felt like he was, safe in there and that made me feel really like it just validated what i was saying like he, he wants he wants somebody that's going to accept him and so eventually what happened oh my goodness <laughs> that's the bell Woo. so eventually this kid he um everyone eventually after hearing me talk about you know like hey you guys just be a little bit more accepting he's a great kid you just got to get to know him and so since he was in my classes and he was always there and I was always, you know, pushing for this kid to, to do well. And he, he excelled in my classes. And eventually the kids actually started to appreciate him. They're like, yeah, he's this nerdy little guy, but he knows all the answers. He can help us. Like he can teach us what we need to know. And he he's sure he's different, but that's OK. Mm -hmm. And if he's different, then I can be different because all these kids, they wanted to be the same. And I was like, you see him over there? <laughs> Like he's doing his own thing and he's happy. Yeah. Like he's happy with his life. And it just, I'm going to, I really, that's probably like the one kid that I'm going to miss more than anybody I've ever taught as cause he, he not only taught me to be accepting of everybody in their own differences, but he taught all of them. I mean, they, this lot, this year I saw on my Facebook feed that they picked him for the homecoming court. Uh, like, yeah. <laughs> like, so, I mean, he just, he taught me so much and he taught his other classmates so much and he's going to forever stick with me. Well, what a, what a boring, boring world this would be if we were all like, right? Right. That's what I tell him all the time. I'm just, oh. being different and being weird and being nerdy. Like we need everything. We need all walks of life from, to make this world work. Um, all right. So I got two more questions for you. Um, one of the questions for you is what are your biggest challenges as a teacher? Ooh. <laughs> and what do you do to improve as a teacher? Okay. So my challenges as a teacher is, <sighs> 
I'm just going to be like totally honest because I feel like being honest is absolutely the only way to be truly honest with yourself to be honest with other people. Yep. Um, so my one thing is just um, discipline. Like I have a really hard time with that. I hate having to get onto kids. I hate having to referral, so write referrals and detentions. Like I hate doing that. Mm -hmm. And as a teacher, I have to strive for them to be better. So I have to push them a little bit more. Right. So for me, I have to push myself to be like, okay, the rules stand and I have to enforce those rules. And that, that's hard for me sometimes because I just, I just want everything to be kumbaya. <laughs> Right. But I, I would challenge you. I would challenge you a little bit. Um, and, and I don't how we, we've only been talking for about 40 minutes or so right now. So we don't know each other that well. But so I don't know exactly what you do in your classroom. But I will say that a referral is not always the answer. No. Um, I know of uh, even this year, I have a student who probably deserves a lot of referrals um, that I won't get into right now. But in order for me to connect to this student at the moment, me not writing the student a referral is what the student needs so that I, as this student's teacher, hopefully will help you in your classroom and help everybody else in their classroom because I'm affecting that student one day at a time so that you don't have to write that referral. Or if this student is getting referrals in all their other classes, but I'm the one that's not, Hopefully that will trickle down to maybe the second teacher's not writing them up anymore. So it's not always it's not always the answer. But what I'm hearing from you is you have to hold students accountable. I think that the the challenge for us as educators is is really figuring out what method of classroom management is going to be most effective so that you don't have to discipline the kid. Um, and how we do that, we get to know our kids. You have to. Yes. And if you don't, See, if you don't know who your kids are exactly you're just gonna write referrals left and right you know but sure. what's causing that that outburst why are they cursing in your class why are they tardy why are they this and if you just get to know the kid you know like right now like i have a kid who's coming to class or not coming to class and in my head i'm like okay you're just skipping and you're boozing the system right now but she's leaving because no one's at home to take care of her grandfather who has cancer and so she's going home to go treat and manage tubes and this and that and go clean things up and whatever. And sometimes she's able to come back and sometimes she's not, but that's all I needed was that statement. And I'm like, look at you. That is a lot. amazing as a teenager, taking the responsibility, number one, to actually go home, go get off of campus, but yet you're still checking in and doing your work for me. This, the, all this COVID, I don't want to ramble on here, but this COVID <laughs> pandemic that we're in right now, is really allowing these kids to grow up faster than usual but it's also revealing to our kids too what inadequacies they might have and they're either going to avoid it or they're going to recognize it and i think some of the kids that are recognizing it they got here on campus because they realized that they need like you they need that structure in their life right <laughs> But I don't want to take too much of your time. So the next, the follow up was, is what do you do as a teacher to improve? What do I do as a teacher to improve? I learn. How? I, I learn everything. I learn every day. I learn. I'm always finding new things. I'm always like searching YouTube for the newest, um, like choreography and dancing. Cause I mean, I'm, I'm, I teach theaters. So I'm always looking for more theater pieces. I'm always reading. I read plays like you wouldn't believe. I read books all the time. I'm always, and I'm always looking for ways for my kids to, in, to, to teach me something. I, and every day I I'm amazed. I'm always learning things that I had no idea. I'm like, what today? I learned a word that I had never heard. It was called cancel culture. And I was like, Y'all got to tell me what that means. Yeah. And I learned it. And I was like, there you go. I learned something today. Yeah. So. <laughs> there we go. We have to, we have to, we have to promote and we have to believe in being a lifelong learner. Um, and I think if you, if you model that um, with your kids and, and, and you said it too, like you told the kids, you learned something. I think it's transparent <laughs> to let kids know that we're just, we're humans. Like we're not perfect. Um, teaching health science. Sometimes the kids think I'm like Dr. Herrera. I'm not, I'm not, I'm nowhere close. I don't know all the answers, you know? So being transparent in front of the kids is also very important too. But my last question for you is what I always end all my podcasts with. And I would like to just give you the, the platform to thank one teacher on campus that has impacted you thus far in your short stay here at Steel High School so far. Um, and why? So 
I, I haven't been here that long, obviously. I've only been here just a couple of months, um, but I'm already so glad that I chose steel. Like leaps and bounds, grateful that I chose steel. The people here are fantastic. And the students are just, they amaze me every day. And I'm, I'm so blessed to be here. But um, if I had to choose one person, um, it would definitely have to be Charles C. Ahrens. I mean, she, she's the head theater director here. And I was really skeptical of having to come in and work as the assistant to another director. I was like, I've been my own director for five years. Like, how, how am I going to adjust to that? And she has been fantastic. <laughs> I mean, she, I, I told her, she's just like a little bit older version of me. Like, I feel like we're the same person. We think of things the same way. We, we solve problems the same way. And we, we get along so well. And it's so nice to finally have that mentor that I've never had. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, those five years that I was at my other school, it was just me. I didn't have somebody else doing what I do. So I didn't have a mentor of any kind. And so here I've got her and she's able to show me how to do things that I don't know how to do. She answers my questions. She's right next door. And I'm sure she's so tired of me popping in there every 10 minutes to ask her questions, but she's always so gracious and she always has something nice to say. And she's just such a thoughtful and wonderful woman. Well, there you go. Well, shout out to her for being awesome. And thank you so much for taking time out of your day. I know you're busy. We're all busy. So I will let you go now. But uh, thank you for joining me on this episode of Keeping Up with the Knights. Absolutely. I've had a wonderful time. All right. Well, enjoy your day and be blessed. We'll talk soon. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Keeping Up with the Knights. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure you subscribe and click the notification button so you know when the next episode is released and then share it with your friends and colleagues. If you're so inclined to do so, would you please rate and review this podcast to help me grow our community of listeners? I hope there was something that you heard today that allowed you to connect outside the classroom. Now, more than ever, we need each other as a support system, and we need to continue to make this the best high school in the state of Texas. Thank you, Night Nation. Now, go be someone's champion today.